up people welcome back and we got another great behind the scenes video today this one is courtesy of almond film co uh, they are the one that brought me onto this commercial they hired me as a dp and granted me access of the behind the scenes footage to allow me to make this little breakdown video. This was for a local Pennsylvania ski resort, Camelback. I was really stoked to be a part of this project because I snowboard there and it's one of my favorite spots in the Pennsylvania area. Unlike most projects that I work on, this one we were tasked and responsible for creating four different ads at the span of the week that we were shooting there. So normally you're shooting one ad, one project. So we had the responsibility of shooting four different ones. And with that comes a lot of creativity. It comes a lot of a unique opportunity within each ad, but it also presents a few challenges as well. And one of the biggest challenges was making sure that we were remembering what we were shooting uh, on a given day in a specific time, because for example, in the morning of day one, we could be shooting ad number one, and in the afternoon of day one, we could be shooting ad number three. So it was important to stay on top of what we were shooting. And I believe Chris uh, Allman, who was the executive producer and director for the main ad and Luke Covert, who was the director for the other ads, did a great job at creating storyboards that were very in-depth, uh, creating a great shot list to make sure that we were staying on track, make sure we knew what we were shooting and that we were just being as organized as possible. So this was a really fun commercial because this was the first time I've ever got to film snowboarding professionally. I've done it with my friends, obviously with like a GoPro and stuff, but this was the first time I had to do it for a commercial. Before we got into this commercial, we were talking about what were the cameras we were gonna use, what was the best tool for this project. And Chris, the owner of Allman Film Co, owns the DJI Ronin 4D. And when he pitched this camera to me, my initial thoughts were, ooh. When that camera came out, I think there was like a lot of mixed reviews on it, myself included. I didn't know what to think of it. I think I was just like old school mentality, like, ah, I don't even want to consider it. He kept, you know, pitching what this camera could do, what it's capable of, and why this would be the best project, best camera for this project. And, you know, as a DP, you have to be objective. You can't be biased for any camera, really. But I realized this probably was the best camera for this project. So for about 90, 95% of the project, we used the DJI Ronin 4D, and it is the 6K model. For those of you that aren't too familiar with what the Ronin 4D looks like, it is this small box looking camera with a sort of like chicken head stabilizer on it. It's got four axis stabilization, so in reality, your footage is gonna be insanely stable. It's got a dual base ISO of 500 and 5000. It's also got DJI's LiDAR autofocus, which is really great because the touchscreen that is mounted onto the camera itself, the onboard monitor, has a touchscreen so you're able to select what you want in focus. It's really great and mixed with that, it also comes with a follow focus as well that my first AC is able to pull from. And it comes with all the standard handles, top handle comes with the monitor, it's got built-in ND as well. And another really great feature is the built-in transmitter. DJI's wireless transmission is like, not gonna say it's better than Teradek, but I have less problems with the DJI transmission than I do Teradek sometimes, not gonna lie. I love Teradek for majority of the bigger stuff that I use, it's always Teradek, but in this scenario, the DJI transmission wireless system was pretty solid. There's like no latency. The distance is, it can go really far and uh, it's really easy to pair. So that was a really great benefit is having the DJI monitors, the transmission built in already. So it was just a seamless workflow for this whole camera system. Uh, as a DP and for those of you that are watching that are DPs, don't be so hell bent on using a specific camera, be open to options and don't just be biased because you love one particular camera. Your job is to make sure you are providing the best tool for the job and it's gonna create the best image for what you're trying to capture. So let's dive into the lighting breakdown. We're gonna be diving into two particular scenes, kind of three, but the last two are within the same ad, but just two different lighting setups. So the first one is going to be for the main ad that we shot. And we had to take this Italian restaurant and turn it into like an Asian restaurant. And I think production design did a pretty great job at making this look like an Asian restaurant and not any glimpses of an Italian restaurant at all. Uh, the biggest challenge that we faced during this commercial was the fact that it had to look like nighttime because it was dinner, but we shot this in the morning. So it was sunny and bright. And this entire location was filled with huge windows, huge. And we knew this going into it because of the tech scout. And we knew that with scheduling, we weren't able to do this at night. So we had to black out our scene but we had to create a tent for our scene. So what a tent is essentially is, you ever built a fort when you were a kid? That's pretty much what it is. The grip team laid, you know, 12 by negs, duvetine over the 
scene that we were shooting. It was just the area that we were seeing. And they had to create a entire tent that was closed off, no light coming in. And the thing about blacking something out or making it a, a day for night is that once you start taking away light and you start adding a neg to block everything and recreate, you start seeing every little glimpse of daylight that is peeking through. And it is the most tedious thing sometimes. It's like, oh, I think I we got everything. And then all of a sudden you just see this little slash of daylight and you're like, where is this coming from? So uh, I give it up to them for being able to do that because they used every four by floppy, every six by neg, eight by 12 by dude. They used everything they had on the truck to be able to black this thing out and it worked. Again, we're on the run of 4D, but we're also utilizing the Dana Dolly as well for a slow push in through patrons in the foreground to see our main talent talking to each other at a dinner table. So this scene consisted of a wide push in, two over the shoulders and a phone shot. And then the really cool thing about this one was I had full creative control of lighting. I could start from a blank slate, which is really nice because it's not like I'm trying to base it off anything besides a dinner table. So what we did was first find our composition. Then the immediate thing for me when doing a dinner table scene is trying to get an overhead light. And my gaffer key group set up a light map for overhead, and that was served as our main overhead source. Uh, to wrap that, we had two Titan tubes going from uh, far side, kind of cross keying each other to make sure that we were wrapping the key light a little bit more so it wasn't so toppy. There was just a bit of uh, wrap from the opposite side of the camera. Uh, this helped a lot because it helped uh, just shape their face a little bit more, add a little bit more fill. What we wanted to do was create a little bit of color in the background. Uh, in the back, you see these two sconces. They are filled with Aperture B7 light bulbs to like a teal color. And then you obviously see the red in the background. And the red is from the Titan tubes. I believe we had six either on the ground or low pointing up as kind of red up lights. And uh, I think between the red and the teal created a nice color contrast in the background. One of my favorite parts about this particular scene is that at a given point, the ad itself was meant to essentially transport this girl out of this disaster dinner onto the mountain with her friends. That was the whole point. And we had to kind of evoke that poofing or the VFX thing of her just disappearing in camera and appearing in the next shot. So what we did was take an Aperture 1200D, put that through like an icy blue gel, and at a specific point in the action, we're gonna turn that 1200D up from zero to 100, and it's gonna create this kind of like huge spotlight on her back of her head. It's like this like uh, teleporter, like teleporter, it's like a portal light that's going to motivate VFX to poof her out. And that mixed in with a fan and like fake snow that we had, it turned into a really cool plate for VFX to essentially just spin her out and put her into the mountain. And seeing the scene after the edit and the VFX, I, it's crazy what VFX could do. This was, I think, one of my first projects with heavy VFX in it. And it's insane how you could hear them talk about how it's going to happen and what the plan is. But in your head, I don't know VFX that well. I'm like. I don't even know how to do that. But when you see it and you're like, oh, the lighting effect really did help motivate that. And it's just really cool to see real cinematography in real life mixed with VFX and combining it to really create um, an awesome end product. Next breakdown is gonna be for the wedding scene. And the wedding scene was for a particular ad for Camelback to showcase that they can host weddings. And the first one we're gonna break down is the wedding ceremony. And we shot this within Camelback's uh, main lodge. During the location scout, one of the biggest concerns was looking at the windows and seeing where the sun was going to be positioned. And I noticed that there were two particular types of lighting that we can get based on this location. Early in the morning, the sun would be blasting through the windows. And later in the day, the sun would be behind the building, lighting the mountains in the background. Those were the two options that I looked at. It was like, what could be the best for us? And for me, I opted to pitch to shoot later in the day only because I, as much as I want the sun to be blasting through the window and have that great natural light, it's very unpredictable and you have to balance for that heat coming through the window a lot better. You have to have a lot more power than if you were to have the sun beaming into the background, not into you in your building. So luckily the schedule aligned for that and I chose to have the sun illuminating the mountains in the background. This was another creative choice because during the wedding, I wanted to make sure that we actually saw outside the windows. That was an important part. We're on a mountain. We wanted to make sure that it looked good. And luckily it worked. 
because also after that scene we had a reception and it was nighttime, so it only made sense that we shoot later in the day and then by the time we're done with that scene it should become nighttime which would help with the next scene. And that's kind of like a picture perfect example of how scheduling can align for not only you as a cinematographer and the lighting, but also production and talent and other departments as well. So looking at this location, it is a beautiful location in the sense that the windows are huge. You get to see the mountains in the background. It also has a gorgeous fireplace and it has some beautiful chandeliers that I wanted to utilize as well. So those three things I wanted to make sure I utilized in the main master wide shot. I had to have all of those elements in my shot. When blocking the talent, one of the first things that was brought up to me was where they should be. And I think the first idea was having them right up against the fireplace. My immediate thought was, I don't think we should do that because we're going to limit the depth that we're actually going to be shooting. Sure, maybe in real life they would have been up against the fireplace, but for my case in cinematography, I put them about 15, 20 feet away from the fireplace. I just wanted them near the uh, chandeliers and I wanted them to have enough distance in the background so that they would be more in focus and the background would fall off so that I would create a lot more depth. And if they were pressed up against the fireplace, that would limit how much I actually see and I wouldn't be able to see the windows, I wouldn't be able to see the fireplace and the chandeliers all in one shot to make it feel grand, feel large, feel uh, a certain scale. And this is the same concept that goes back to basics and fundamentals of cinematography. How can you create as much depth as possible in a shot? So in terms of lighting, the first thing that we set up was an overhead light. I love overhead lights. I think they add a bit of drama. They're, you know, I think they're just a great way to add a nice hair light, add some separation from the background. Our main light was the Light Mat 4 overhead on a menace arm. We did not have a grid. We used the bare diffusion. And the reason for that was because it's daylight, I didn't necessarily need to have it controlled as much. So I wanted it to be as broad and as wide as possible just to uh, wrap the subjects as best as possible. That in and of itself wasn't gonna do it for me. So we opted for two 1200Ds and we hit those into ultra bounce, kind of cross keying each subject. So dual purpose when you cross key is backlighting somebody or creating an edge or hair light on somebody, but also keying the other person. So we had one eight by and one six by, I think just due to lack of equipment, we had one six by ultra mounts and one eight by ultra bounce and both 1200s going into a CTO to create some warmth. And the last light that we used was a, uh, something I particularly have been doing a lot recently and it's for scenes that require sunlight or like a flare or some sort of like a happy moment is I'll take a Leco and right outside of frame, I'll place the light and I'll, I'll talk with my gaffer and uh, I'll walk through the scene and at a particular point, I want that flare to hit. And it was just outside of frame. You can't even tell the lights there, but when you step in with the camera at a particular point, it flares and if you could hide it behind something it looks like the sun is beaming through and considering that this scene was shot on the uh, Laowa nanomorphs it created a cool anamorphic flare so that to me was just a really great touch a great element of how you as a cinematographer can help elevate something by 10 percent and if that wasn't there sure it would have still looked great but i think it was just an added uh, element of just like happiness and warmth that you wanted to have during that ceremony scene. The reception in cake cutting was probably one of my favorite scenes that we shot during this entire commercial. What we did for this particular scene was wanted to create drama. We wanted to make it look uh, like a great, like a party. So in the background, all the way in the back, production design put some candles to help illuminate the fireplace a little bit. That just added a little bit of light in the background, just some depth, nothing crazy there, but it helped. Similar to the ceremony scene, our first light that we had set up was our main overhead source. This was to kind of create a uh, top-down spotlight look on all the guests and the cake dancing. And this time we opted to use a grid so it was a little bit more controlled and wouldn't spill on the walls or anything that we didn't want to see. We just wanted to be a little bit more dramatic and that's what the grid did for us. But instead of having the two 1200Ds going into the ultra bounce, we wanted it to be way more dramatic because it was nighttime. So I had two Lecos on opposite corners and my gaffer and key grip were manually panning that light uh, to kind of create this moving head, moving spotlight look. And that mixed in with a ton of haze created these really awesome beams. And when you're moving around the camera while they're dancing, you hit the beams, you hit the flares, the lights are moving around the subject. It was a, it was a high energy, really, uh, really beautiful scene that we, we captured there. This was just a creative choice that I thought would look the best and create a, a 
pretty good high production value that um, I thought lended well to the commercial and the ad. And it turned out great. And the other great thing about it was that we didn't really have any stands close to the subjects. Uh, we wanted to have full freedom and flexibility to move around, dance with them, allow them to have the freedom to dance, move, cut the, wherever they wanted to go. I didn't want to light faces. I wanted to light the space and then them move within the space. That's how I lit and shot the reception scene, ceremony scene, and the dinner scene at the Asian restaurant. So that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Before I go, I wanna say thank you to Chris, executive producer and director, Luke Covert, director, uh, Almond Film Co., the production team, g and &E, camera team, art, everybody who was a part of this project. Uh, these images only look this way because it's a team, it's a joint effort. Wardrobe, hair, makeup, everybody's involved to make this image look a certain way. And it's not just cinematography. So thank you for everyone to be involved and everyone's passion to make this commercial what it was. And that's all I got for you today. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.